So before I even start this video, I just want to point out that I am not a professional when it comes to surface pattern design. I have not gone to college, I haven't studied it, I haven't gone to university with it. It's literally what I just play around with as an amateur on Illustrator or Photoshop. Now, if you want to go into this seriously, then I do recommend having a look at courses, um, maybe watching more YouTube videos that have probably a bit more knowledge than what I do about this. But I wanted to make this video just to, as like a small introduction on surface pattern design with designing patterns for fabrics. If you did want to go into it professionally, the sort of route that you could start with. Um, and also like, you know, a few other tips and tricks that I've just learned along the way. As an amateur, um, I just pick things up along the way. I've watched a couple of videos myself, um, checked out on Pinterest different ideas. I use Illustrator and Photoshop, um, but you might not need to use them if you can find other software that can do the same thing that might also be free, so you can cut down on the cost of that as well. So surface pattern design, I think that's the proper term for it, but if it isn't and you know, pop it in the comment section below um, and educate me on that because I just know it as surface pattern design. and. What it is, is of course the designs for fabrics, printed fabrics. They can be really simple and then they can be really, really extravagant and very complicated. If we go down more the simple route, you're looking at things like polka dots and stripes, basic, um, and then, you know, more expensive or more intric intricate like um, William Morris, things like that. That's way more complicated than polka dots and stripes. Um, but it can be used for printing on fabrics, it can be used for printing on garments, tablecloths, upholstery, all those types of products and um, things that you would use a printed fabric for. If I'm creating a pattern for a fabric or if I'm using it to put onto garments or something like that, then I use or I upload the pattern onto Redbubble. Redbubble is a print-on-demand website that prints designs onto quite a lot of stuff. Um, cushions, phone cases, t-shirts, bags, leggings, socks, shower curtains. It prints, there's so many different products that it prints on and it's a good way of seeing what your design looks like on a garment before actually buying it on a fabric. There's other Websites as well. Um, this one is it called Zazzle and Society Six. I think they're similar print-on-demand websites. But for printing onto fabric or things like um, shower curtains, you will need a repeated design. And this is a design that can be repeated on the fabric again and again and again. So I'm going to go through um, a very simple design um, that I've made on Illustrator and Photoshop and how I turn it from a very basic pattern to a repeated pattern with a few different tips along the way. There's one tip that I think is just a game changer. Um, before I found this I used to have to cut the pattern and stick it back together but this tip on Photoshop is just like perfect. It is the best thing on Photoshop for a piece of design. And then what we'll do is we'll upload this pattern onto Redbubble and I'll take you through the process of uploading it and yeah, so you get a brief idea of how you can create a repeated pattern, pop it onto a garment, see what it looks like on a product and then um, use it either for printing onto fabric or for actually printing directly onto products. So let's get started. It's not going to be the best design I've ever made, um, that's quite clear, but it's just an idea of where you can take surface pattern design if you are someone like me who just dabbles around with it and just enjoys creative processes. So the first thing to do is open up Photoshop and I've chosen a camera size of 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. I did these quick shapes in Illustrator so I'm just going to export them in, just drag and drop onto the canvas. So I'm turning them all off for the moment because what we need to do is make this uh, view for a repeated pattern. And you do this by going to view and then pattern preview. And what this does is this creates like a blank infinity canvas. You've got your aspect ratio there for guidance. Um, and it's just, it's just fantastic. It's just really, really easy to use. And you can see what your pattern or your design will look like as a repeated pattern. So I've gone ahead and just turned on one of those shapes and I'm just going to start designing this fab or this 
pattern. Um, it's a really simple design, I really haven't gone too fussy with this because it is an example, but if you have a design that you've made and you want to turn it into a repeated pattern that um, you can use on fabric or other products, then this is a great way of doing it and see what it will look like. These random shapes I just made in Illustrator, but you could also make these in Photoshop. Um, it's pretty simple, just use a pen tool or um, you know use the, the shape tool, just make some uh, random shapes if you want to do something similar. As I duplicate them and I put them over top that uh, guideline, that blue guideline, you'll see that it's repeated onto the other side. And this is what makes this um, really good, is because it will automatically create that repeated pattern. When you export this as a PNG or as a JPEG, it will be perfectly aligned for a repeated pattern. So you can move these wherever you like, fiddle around with the design, with the placement of the shapes. Um, you could also layer up backgrounds if you wanted to. It totally depends on what your design is. And as I, as I zoom out there, you'll see that this is completely um, repeated across the whole of the canvas. So it's good if you've got you know whatever fabric size you're printing onto. Um, when you scale it up or scale it down, you can see what it looks like as a small print or as a large print. Just finish off, mark some of these on, and I think that is done. I don't want to fiddle around with too much of this one, um, but I quite like the simplicity of it, the bright colours, primary colours, and some mixed colours in there as well. Uh, the white background really makes it stand out, along with the black outlines. You'll need to create an account with Redbubble and then go to the dashboard, add new work, upload your design. You'll need to put in a title, so we'll just go with shapes abstract for this one, might change it later. Pop in some tags relevant to your design, so I've got shapes, abstract art, scribble, modern, contemporary, primary colours, and you can pop in a description. Um, I will probably go and change that later. When you get to the actual product previews, you're going to want to turn off anything that's designed for a motif, so that's the standard print clothing, um, and the you know the bucket hats things like that, that that won't work for a Peter design, and instead you want to turn on the products that are are intended for a Peter designs. So for example, the chiffon tops. Um, once you go into the actual editing of the product or design of your products, you'll get this thing called choose pattern. So click that and go to regular grid. Don't do offset grid unless your design is made for offset patterns. It needs to be regular grid because otherwise it won't line up. So click on that and you'll see that the um, design will now be repeated and you can scale this item, uh, image down so you can make it as small as you like or as big as you like. Uh, just see what feels right for you and then click on uh, this disabled which will make it enabled um, and yeah go through the rest of the products there. There's loads of different products so this is a really good way of seeing what your design looks like on different products. I make some designs bigger, make some smaller, because I think it depends on what the product actually is. Um, for example, if you've got a jigsaw pattern, you won't really want that to be really small, because that will be so hard to do, but a uh, bigger print might be better. Um, the leggings, I think, work sort of okay, okay with more of a smaller pattern, and you've got, you know, dog, dog blankets or dog mats. Um, so yeah, there's a good range of products on Redbubble that you can play around with with your design on them. I think the phone cases work really well as well. So let's take a quick look at one of the products and I've chosen the socks. I mean, look at that, bright coloured socks. Um, and you can go through the images so you can see what the images look like um, with a model on them. So you have some really nice abstract shaped socks there. I think everyone I know is going to get these for Christmas presents this year. Um, and you can go to the different products, you know, just click on the view product page and you can see it on scarves and it's nice to actually see these the designs rather than them flat with the, pro um, with the pattern preview, you can see them actually on someone wearing um, a garment with your pattern on. Now if you are interested in surface pattern design or creating pattern fabrics and you think to yourself, oh there's so much that's been already been created, I, I, I don't know what to draw, I don't know what to, to make, um, how can I be different or what can I do to make my design stand out? First of all, think how many fabrics are on sale that are stripes and polka dots. Like You don't just get one fabric that is polka dots and that's what everybody buys. There are so many polka dot pattern fabrics out there coming from different designers, they might be exactly the same, they might be completely different, but there's so many of them that, you know, people still continue designing them. So 
there's no such thing as running out of imagination or running out of creativity. So if you're stuck, and if you think to yourself, I really want to design something, but I don't know where to start, maybe just start with the basics. Start with really paired back designs, you know, shapes, stripes, dots, um, letters, things like that, and just see where it goes from there. I hope this has helped you see where you can start off with surface pattern design if you are interested in that creative process from designing your own fabric and then getting it printed um, or putting it onto products. Like I mentioned at the start, I'm not professional. Um, I literally just do this because I like to draw and then I like to see where I can put it onto patterns, onto fabric and products. So thanks very much for watching. Like I said, I hope this helps. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any tips or anyone else that also uh, that is watching this um, video and then they want to learn more then please do put them in the comment section below I'm sure we can all help each other so thanks again don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you next time